you know, I often say I, I'd like to work on it now that there's uh, uh, underground people doing it. I'd like to work on perfecting the gyro jet. This was a, uh, a pistol and uh, there was a carbine version when it was made in the 1960s that did not fire a, a, a conventional bullet round. It fired a small missile. The problem with them was that the manufacturing of the time could not create, um, you needed to put spin on it, right, to be accurate. And so you had to make little nozzles on it that were at angles that, were, that created the spin. Well, they couldn't do that back then. It was just, you couldn't reliably manufacture things to the higher tolerances that you needed. Good 3D printers, however, probably can manufacture them. So I'd like to see the gyrojet uh, perfected. Um, so, you know, let engineers run wild with that sort of thing. You know, redo the gyrojet, um, you know, make it plastic. A gyrojet, since it's firing a, a small missile, essentially, uh, doesn't have to be. They used to test those things by firing them through um, toilet paper uh, tubes, you know, just the cardboard. Um, it doesn't have to be anything that's bad. There's no recoil um, because it's it, the difference is instead of having this giant acceleration like you do with a conventional firearm, you get the acceleration out and the thing actually gets reaches its peak acceleration after it's left the barrel. Um, so you just need something that'll fire the, uh, you know, start the thing moving. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea. I think it probably is at this point something that you could perfect. And if I had uh, the engineering know-how, uh, I, I would do that. <laughs> I would perfect the gyro jet. I think it's perfectible now. Larry Larry says, nuclear power was huge in the culture in the 1950s in magazines, etc. Yeah, um, that's one of the things that I always like to tell people. You know, I, I'm involved in Star Trek online uh, stuff and uh, online, you know, forums and stuff like that. And a lot of people now, and I get it, I get it. A lot of people now look at Star Trek, the original series, and they see it, and they see it as camp and fake phony looking because of the technology. What they don't understand is that in the 1950s and 1960s, like you're saying, Larry, the expectation of science fiction authors and futurists of that time was that we were going to have a massive breakthrough in power, that nuclear energy was going to become very commonplace, and that so power was going to be where we saw the giant uh, you know, breakthrough. We didn't see that. What we saw was a breakthrough in information technology, and they could never have predicted that in the 50s and 60s. For them, the IBM uh, computers that filled a warehouse, that was a computer, and that was the way it's always going to stay. They never expected to see what we have today, where we have, as I say repeatedly, more power in our compu more computing power in our pockets than it took to put man on the moon. Uh, Larry, Larry says, uh, as you said, 3D printers will negate any controls o on gun ownership. Absolutely. Eventually, as those things mature more and more, they are essentially Star Trek's replicators. The really high-end ones can, and medical-grade ones, can replicate, can 3D print living cells. If you can do that, you're not far off from printing food. Um, and they really have, 3D printers really have the, uh, the potential to completely change uh, life on Earth. It has the potential to completely eliminate hunger and completely eliminate want as that matures. And the same thing can be said of weapons. Um, there's a place where you can download uh, the um, lo lower receiver of various types of guns that have been 3D printed or the plans for them. Uh, or upper receivers, rather, and um, it's, you know, there, that's what's going to happen. That's what, you're absolutely right, Larry Larry. There's n that's what's going to happen. Yeah, and Larry Larry says that he couldn't uh, foresee the microchip. Yeah, 1950s, 1960s, transistors. Transistors were the huge breakthrough, but that still meant your computer was gigantic. You know, if you look at cutaway drawings and stuff like that made uh, of that era. The computer is always shown as a giant core that runs several decks through the center of the saucer section of the Enterprise. Not the case anymore. You know, in, 
in the uh, the Abrams movies, that whole area has been replaced with essentially a uh, revolving circular uh, spiral uh, staircase that leads to uh, different decks on the Enterprise because you don't, you know, in today's technology, that's not what you would have for computers. They're getting it wrong there too. <laughs> 20 years from now, um, you know, what they call 3D printing. I'm, not, I'm sorry, not 3D printing. Um, uh, 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 quantum energy teleportation, which isn't exactly what it is. It's a quantum entanglement sort of deal. You take two atoms, and using a particular type of laser and frequency, you essentially replicate the state. You have an atom here with a certain energy state, and you replicate it precisely over here. And if you take these atoms at a distance and you make a change in this one, it's replicated over here regardless. It's some quantum entanglement that we don't quite understand. But that has the, the potential to completely revolutionize everything about IT. Because once you can change things at the atomic level, you know, for me, I can immediately see it as data. You know, if you can change, if you can change an, an atomic state here that represents a one, then it becomes a one over here. Change it to a zero, becomes a zero over here. You're not left with anything like what we think of as networking. No wires, no uh, Wi-Fi, no radios, no uh, 4G, 5G, nothing. And then you put those into chips, and you're getting down to things that are fantastically small. Um, what we've got in our phone is only the beginning. Uh, that has the technology, that has the, the uh, capability to completely revolutionize everything about um, how we do computers. And along with 3D printing, I think we're at a point where we're revolutionizing much of what it is to be human. You know, if, if you don't have to worry about where your food is coming from and you can make almost anything that you want out of your 3D printer, you know, you're, you've got Star Trek's replicator and it changes what it is to be human. You know, people are not going to be hungry anymore, eventually, when that stuff is, you know, finally matures as a technology. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds.